Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Charlie. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Gwen. Oh, I kind of said it. <laughs> that was melodic. Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. If you're watching this, I've got a little new background. I'm going to jazz it up. Um, and <laughs> Charles Pinky and Glenys are here. Hi. Hi. Hey, dolls. Um, listeners, if any of you are Black artists or you know Black artists, please pass them my way. Um, a bitch has a guest room slash office now. And you know, I got to mm. get it decorated. Mm-hmm. Decorated. Zecorated. Z. Yeah. Zecorated. Zecorated. Cause y'all got your little artwork behind you. I got this white walls. I so like, hang mine up. Speaking of which, I was at work the other day and this woman was like, So when where are you usually sitting with all that amazing art behind you? Like mm-hmm. that's your house, right? And I, when, when I tell you you're working on a background. Got, I probably looked like I saw a fucking ghost. I was like, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> they be clocking you they be clocking you. your internet's doing some funky things That's but um usual. i'm it's a bad I'm area a... i think i live in a bad area every all my neighbors have the same problem who do you talk to White one side? other person it's a bad area two other people mm. That's not problem. enough research I, for so me i'm gonna call them when i go up the phone with y'all anyway i can start yes okay, okay. So I am leaving two things on red. I'm not replying mm. to anything, mm. not because I'm not happy, but there's just so much shit in the news. So the first thing is all the fucking breakups and divorces that have been happening. So Tia Maori, who actually was on our show and was lovely, um, is filing for divorce from her husband, Corey Hardick. They've been married for 14 years. Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen. Oh yeah, I don't care. That. Next, he's <laughs> racist. <laughs> Miguel and his lady, and <laughs> just try to say her name, child. Madeline, no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna butcher that woman's name. I Y'all know. Don't know what I'm talking about the his, his lady. <laughs> well, he's the They're famous of- one. So she got a podcast. Oh, okay. Um, but. <laughs> She, yeah, all these divorces and it's just so sad. And I don't know what makes me sad. Like, and I I can only imagine like being with someone for almost two decades and then just like not being with them. Like A, shit had to be really fucking bad, I think, to make that sort of decision, maybe. And B, I just feel like that's just like a fucking, it's like Mr. Krabs meme, like Mm -hmm. your whole world is changing. Mm -hmm. Cause like- your partner is like your best friend. Like that's the person you speak to every day. That's the person you have the most contact with. Like, yeah, that's the most important relationship. And so to just like lose that is, yeah. Um, I can I add... comment on that really quickly? Go ahead, Glenn. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think that from what I know of those relationships, it's very outside looking in. I'm, I'm sure it's probably the way that you described it, Chelsea, and probably super painful. And I think like Miguel and Nazanin, we're best friends they've been together for a long fucking time like since they were kids but I was going to reference there's a picture of Nicole Kidman when she's divorcing Tom Cruise and she looks like it's the best day of her fucking life so for some (laughs) people maybe it's not Mr. Krabs maybe some of them are like woo, child yes yeah. Maybe some of them it's like Saint Saint West when he's walking oh yes your favorite so happy in his little tracksuit yes what I was going to add to that is I do think it's a little odd, like, ha- like, or maybe just an interesting social thing that we do with social media now and being able to be in people's business where people were like, no, or like, so like, and I'm like, you people are like, what's going on in their relationship or like how it ended? Like, I just found that really, really fascinating because I also think like divorce, this is coming from someone child of a divorcee 
is just like sometimes you have a lot of different chapters like it sucks of course like you don't want to lose that person in your life but like unfortunately you outgrow relationships and things change I just wish them the best with like co-parenting for those who have kids and like things like that but yeah you never know yeah I mean for me like obviously I don't know these people and like I'm not crying in my pillow about them getting divorced but like it is just the idea of just like the union of marriage for me. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. something that I think is so beautiful, like when it when it does work. So like when it doesn't, it is, I imagine, something that could be really sad and devastating. Um, but anyways, I saw this post and it was like, Ayo, if your relationship made it out of this retrograde, retrograde y'all are really meant to be. Oh, shit. So Yikes. apparently something was happening. So there's something cosmic yeah with the pseudoscience um we need to we need to get miss miss chani we need, oh my god can we get her oh email her go i'm gonna try that's a business meeting thing um but anyways <laughs> <laughs> i also saw that apparently neil long is this is still in my in the relationship on red part red mm-hmm. neil long apparently is taking um udaka back back Ime Udaka. Sorry. Back. Damn, I'm Glenn. Scream. Screaming. I know, let me not scream. Damn. I was actually so that like I was like, what? But you know what? You don't I'm know just, them niggas. You know, I don't know. And forgiveness. You know, Beyonce forgave. Y'all's fave. That I just don't know if I can forgive man. a public embarrassment. And that's a you problem. That you gotta unpack. I just feel like that is just so. Or maybe that's her boundary that she doesn't need to unpack. And for you, you would never forgive that. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just like, really? I don't know. Like you, that's fucking sloppy too. <laughs> now you got all these people in my business. I don't know. I don't get TMZ chasing me around. Yeah. The other thing I'm leaving that's on red it. is the Kardashian West people. Kanye West for his White Lives Matter shirt. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And Kim Kardashian, because she was fined $1.3 million for her participation in a crypto scam. A woman whose, co- whose company is, value- is valued at more than, I think at this point, it's $3 billion. Mm-hmm. Like, she's rich. Very rich. She has a ginormous plane that she rides around to take... It's just wild that she just scammed all these people into participating, into buying this cryptocurrency mm-hmm. that she herself knew was bullshit. She didn't believe in. And all she made was, I think, like 1.3 million. Oh, no, she was oh, fine. So she, oh, 1.3 yes. million. But like she did all of that for, I think it was only like $250,000. It was super small. Why did I be so penny it pinching like sense. that? And it's, it's penny pinching. It's extreme greed. That's really the word. It's yeah. greed. It's greed. It's like you're fucking rich. You're generationally rich. Yeah. Give it a rest. And I, think, I don't need her to they make nothing anything. else. Right. Like I'm like, we don't need another perfume. Money. We don't you're need another. Always on TV talking home. about having um migraines all the time. I don't know if y'all see that commercial. I see yeah, it yeah, every day. Well, she probably has migraines. I know, but with s- Tristan, but. <laughs> But Kim, on the other hand, she don't need to be scamming people out with cryptocurrency. And yeah. and then it's just like this cycle of like people feeling like, granted, I think Kanye is, I don't want to be ableist, but I think he's a maniac um, and unwell and abusive and et cetera. But her family is just terrible. So anyways, that's just my tea for today. Mm, monkey see monkey do over there <sighs> yeah i don't i uh, those names i'm just like can i you not know, hear them or see them for a few days a fucking white lives matter shirt that is literally a, a terrorist group bitch when i tell you how <laughs> much that shit triggered black me, people i just started thinking of, it just it, i'm like in a bad state right now it's evoking like feel, i'm like thinking about the george floyd time and thinking about being in the streets like it just uh. stirred everything back up well he did say that, slavery was a choice so that's the type of man we did uh, uh. on that topic i'm gonna also leave on red just like celebrity shenanigans <laughs> i think particularly that kanye scene of people 
that think that they're fucking geniuses by wearing those same big ass shaped sunglasses that everybody else is wearing. And those do you big know ass those people? people? That whole scene of people that just be running around together that be like and that that now has like offshoots of Gen Z dressing the same way, like looking like they came off a of Balenciaga runway. It all seems like very culty and small minded and fucking weird. Like, why is everybody wearing these damn sunglasses? Acting like they are the like sunglasses. the pinnacle of cool and they all look the fucking uh, the same, thinking that they're like determining what like the kids and the youth culture are doing. And like y'all are so out of touch with what actually is like interesting and relevant. Like Kanye West, you're not an arbiter of cool. Like you have some mm. people that follow you for sure. But like the more and more I look at your shit personally, I'm fucking bored. You've been making the same shit. Same shit. Ever. Those damn like nude one piece outfits that now every fucking nasty gal, um, whatever <laughs> fashion fucking, nova, fashion novas, everybody's making shit that looks like that. It can no longer be, you know, forward Crying. thinking and interesting. It's just and not- the nerve of him to come come for um Gabriella Karifa Johnson, who's like been mm-hmm. you know in the fashion world. I think mm-hmm. she works at Vogue. Um, yes. Yes. And speaking out on issues about race for him to come after her. And shout out to Gigi Hadid, by the way, because she said, you wish you had a percentage of her intellect. You're a bully Period. and a joke. Jokes. Gigi, Gigi be speaking up. I'll say that about Miss Gigi Hadid. and Bella. Those those girls. I'm like, OK. Yeah. OK. Glenn, are you replying? Sorry, to I'm just looking at positive... Gabriella's page um, to see. I just, I've been every now and then just checking in on the sis. She's posting. Okay, she looks but... happy. She's vibrant. But So apparently her and Kanye sat down and I had a dinner. How did you mm-hmm. guys feel about that? Because I was a little irritated. I feel like he's G-ing it a little bit. He's a fucking annoying person. And then did you see that Vogue posted that too? Like he and Ka- Gabriella and Kanye had a yeah. private meeting. I'm like. They did. They did. From sources that work at Vogue, they did. Do you know who else and was I'm in the runway show? Sayla Marley, mm-hmm. fucking oh, Lauren Hill's yes. daughter, was the one in the shirt. And, and Bob she's Marley's talking granddaughter, to, right? She's talking about like people need to leave with more compassion. They need to understand the message. I'm like, are y'all all smoking crack? What is right. going on? <laughs> How do in all that... the black people who lost family members from police Ooh. brutality feel? How do you think they feel seeing you walking a runway with white we'll lives matter? Compassion. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Are you kidding? It's just so just bad. Just bad. Just bad. Just not good. Um, am I replying to anything? I mean, I've had this one thing on red for a while. I'm just going to say it now. It's a little bit old, but um, people that be playing with their food on the internet need to stop. Get rid of them all. Playing um, with their food? Like mukbang? No, 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 no. There's like these people that like, so at this point, my explore page is all people like cooking things. I don't know. It's just my algorithm. It actually is my sense of um, ASMR. I love watching people like chop things, sear them. You know, they take the, the knife and they scrape it across a very crispy piece of toast or potato. And then oh. there's fucking people that get on the internet and they fucking play around with food and make disgusting concoctions to, like, piss people off. And there was recently some people that were making, like, a drunken chicken and they were pouring chicken in NyQuil and fucking stirring it around. That's irresponsible. I heard about the NyQuil chicken. Irresponsible, NyQuil wasteful, chicken? stupid, yeah, dumb, disgusting, corny, fiending for clickbait. Again, wasteful. Um, so yeah, they can all suck a dick. Have you been seeing the alcohol in a break? You're in a strange place. Am I? Like, have you the seen alcohol, I've, I've watched a bunch of alcohol in a Brita thing. That shit is Do you hilarious. think it works? I watched this man. What is it supposed to do? Like make it not taste gross. So you just pour vodka in a Brita or you pour like yeah. through the filter or you pour tequila through the filter and it's just supposed to taste like water, but it's still alcohol. That seems like a, like a bad news. I'm just not it fucking in my Brita. Very that, dangerous. But... I know. I guess somebody bought a new Brita. I watched this black man and his cousins do like 15 of them. They tried so many different types. Hennessy. Did it work? Patron. She's in a strange place. 
Did they what? work? I just be on TikTok, girl. No, I'm saying, um, saying in your in your feed. Oh, your my, feed I'm is... like, <laughs> did the shit work? Did yeah, the it worked. Some taste of them it? worked. Some of them did not, though. Like they mm. used like Pinnacle. The Pinnacle did not work. Yeah, that's a little too nasty. Obviously, they used, um, they used Everclear. Ooh, I think the obviously. Everclear worked. No. <laughs> also, that's fucking. They're. I don't. I don't. I, I'm not. They're in like this. college. That's cap. <laughs> not her trying to use slang no they were drinking it anyway, right making no faces i please <laughs> anyways you go girl um you all just made me think of a a quick on red um which is i'm so grossed out by how much power celebrity has mm-hmm. like the fact that this granted con- what kanye did is like a a bigger conversation when it comes to like race and art and blah 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 right but like ultimately I'm just like this is fucking crazy like this is consuming our time Mm -hmm. and our brain cells and it's scary because this is like one of many instances not just related to him but overall the concept of celebrity I think it's it's quite strange well um I was thinking about that really quickly though they they just get to act so horrendously to people and be and do terrible things and get to be at the top and make a bunch of money and it's so fucking weird i don't know if y'all also saw like cardi b and jt like beefing and saying nasty ass mm-hmm. things to each other mm-hmm. just people and like apparently people are fucking with tory lanes again like in a big way i in heard a this, big way i heard lebron james Oh yeah, I was Tory so Lanez? disappointed. Oh, what are we and doing? He's always see, talking about see, but here we go. Women. Here, here we go. But this is the thing, right? Like, it's layered in like social issues that should matter, but also like, I shouldn't care about Tory Lanes but, and LeBron James this much. I see what you're saying, issues. but they have so much influence that like, exactly. to just say like, it doesn't matter is not realistic. Like Kanye, there are so, there, there's us who think the white lives matter shirt is deplorable, but there are so many people on the internet who are like, yo bro, art man, white lives right. matter. Kanye said it. So now it's Y'all cool, so, man. So and, and I understand that. My point is like the fact that celebrity has been able to get to this level for all of us, whether we align and agree or we disagree is really crazy. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of scary and I consume it too. It's influence. It's the age of the influencer. It's the like age they have influence. influence. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, See, it's that also got me like fucked up. Belonging or something. I don't know. I'm thinking about the Kanye thing now. Like, I think people that like love Kanye want to be a part of that tribe. They want to speak that language. They want to, I don't know. I really feel like they're yeah. under some sort of fucking spell but it's not just him it's it's all of all of like pop culture Mm -hmm. the influence the the accessibility how quickly things can go up on the internet and then it causes a fucking scurry and flurry and yeah maybe we should just get off of our phones a little bit well, we're podcasters, so we kind of have to be kept abreast on these things. But I know. But why are they? But like, if we could all like take because a reset, people, it's the zeitgeist. Or something. People, it's pop. It's popular culture. Like, yeah, but we it's can like. Culture. How how do we change the narrative? How do we like have other somewhat to me more valuable conversations? I don't know. I'm just talking. It just came to both. my mind. I think you have both. I think it is important to like recognize the signs of the times and what are people talking about and what are current issues. Like, I think there's a way to look at it in like a deep, with a deeper lens, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and um, unpack it that way. Like, what does it say about culture at large? Yeah. What does it say in 2022, October, you know, what is going on in our society right now? Mm-hmm. that's true I, back on this. I hope that especially for the younger generations that they can find value and joy outside of their phones and <laughs> the internet and the television and yeah. like in their community in 
like real dynamics. Like, do you ever see a bunch of young people at a table talking? And even we're like this sometimes, and they're all on they're they, they're mm-hmm. on the phone. Like I know I know it's like an old TikTok. person. It's yeah, so old. <laughs> but I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? This shit is fucking crazy. Anyways, um, I'll be quick with my other red. That leads me to my other red. I'm leaving our government and Luma, the uh, electric company of Puerto Rico on red because Puerto Rico still doesn't have any fucking power. And it's crazy Mm. because for one, their like original power grid, I guess, was publicly owned, but still super corrupt. And I was listening to a podcast last night and I wish I had the term, but it's essentially like disaster capitalism where people Mm. take advantage of like disastrous situations for profit so Mm. this privatized company came in and was like oh bet like your electrical system's trash like now we're gonna come and like make a profit off of it and so it's luma is a co-owned between the canadian and united u.s company but like they haven't been able to fix the power grids they've actually made like situations worse where people don't have power for an extended period of time and not only is it like people not having power but like within the podcast i learned about this woman who like somehow the electric helps her to like get fresh water because she lives like so far up in the mountains Mm. so like she this old lady has to like go to a stream every day to get her water. So So it's like, yeah. So it's like, it's not just like, do we have lights? Do we have internet? Do we have TV? But it's also like just basic human needs. And the fact that like companies and people would take advantage of that for capital is so wild to me. Evil. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely leaving that on red and, um, this is a weird reply. It just came to me as I was like prepping this, but um, I'm replying to the resilience of our ancestors, whether that be our grandparents, our great grandparents. Um, we just recorded an episode and you guys will hear more about that, but it just made me think, we talked about like the passing of trauma and it just made me think of how fucking resilient these people had to be to like get us here. Um, and yeah there's so much power in that and it's very very exciting and moving so hope that applies to all the fucked up shit that is going on in the world right now that people can find peace and resilience um it's so wild god okay i'm gonna get off of my soapbox in a second but i was talking to my friend and he was saying how he feels that a lot of humanity i might have said this before a lot of humanity is in suffering like finding humanity is within suffering and that is how like a lot of Mm. people unfortunately oddly maybe it's trauma bonding Mm -hmm. but like when you think of like people who don't have money it's like now we're there's so much like heart and soul and community yeah yeah yeah, exactly um Mm. and how people find joy even in their suffering or like they create like such great art music Mm -hmm. innovation is created in that suffering um so yeah I don't know where I was going with that but just made me think of that Mm -hmm. yeah it's a reality damn it's time for the group chat okay (laughs) oh not the not the uh no, no, no. I was like, not the um the siren. <laughs> oh. Because oh. you know what I right re- after. Franco, you can cut this out, but I realize we don't always we don't have to be like, okay, and now it's the group chat, because we have a sound that does that. Yeah. We can just stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. She okay. she she skipped hot line bling, it's fine. That's what I noticed. Oh, all right. What's, but what's, I don't what's your phone to. saying? I don't have anything. I just have like, right. dinner. Pointless segment. <laughs> My phone is popping. I just talked a lot, so I'm gonna stop. What's your? All right, go. It's a segment. I ain't got nothing. No, 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 no. (laughs) It's fine. You know, it's lit over here. We got a lot. We got a lot of plans. We got a lot. Y'all can talk about what's happening. What y'all was talking about? Be major all day, but that I feel like that would take too long. I don't know what y'all was talking about. Oh well, we were talking about the fact that there was a new study that came out. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe stop and say your hotline is like introduce it. All right, my least favorite segment, fucking hotline yeah. bling. And look, and you got a hotline bling. God, I have to fucking drag it out of myself. But <laughs> I put it in one of our group chats 
Esquire released an article. Um, oh, it was actually kind of an old article. I thought it was new. But anyways, it says, new mm, study reveals- information. <laughs> old information. Old news. <laughs> Literally from 2017. Yikes! <laughs> <But> <laughs> might need an update on this uh, research. Are these stats correct? <laughs> But it said, it, they were talking about it on Clubhouse and I put it in our group chat and it says, new study reveals that one in five straight men watch gay porn. And we were talking about it in our group chat, like, oh, why are you laughing? We were talking about because it. Our- Glenn's eyes lit up. Oh, she was, she, Glenn was ignoring us today, even though typically she's all up in that group chat. I was um, for the first time in a wow. while. First time for everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were just talking about that and how we would feel if our partners um watch, watch gay, gay porn. porn. And I asked mine and he said no. And I was like, well, maybe we could. He was like, no, thanks. <laughs> um, but I don't think it would bother me. I don't know. It's just like a movie. Mm, not quite. Um, <laughs> very different. Yeah, I I don't know if it would, bo- I don't know if the word is bother me, but I, I said this, that I, there would definitely need to be a conversation because to my understanding, I mean, I'm no uh, scientist behind the way this works, but I imagine if you are aroused by that, there's some level or layer. I don't think of that's interest. true. We also really Why? need to get okay. I don't think just because it arouses you means that you want to act on it, right? Because I not watch you want to act on it, and right? I don't like, and you don't want to be me. fisted. <laughs> no. no. I'm not saying you want to act on it, but I'm saying like what so what is it about that that's arousing? Sometimes you don't know. So yeah, sometimes you don't know. Just in here. I literally watch the wildest porn and I don't want to do any of that. I don't want anyone to fist me. (laughs) Yeah, but maybe a lot of women just like like abusive porn. Uh, yeah, but I don't want anyone to put their boot on my head. But yeah, I watch of it. Course, kind of, so. of course, but like you're attracted to like the the power dynamics maybe and like the abuse. So I'm like, okay, I don't want the abuse. you're watching. <laughs> Not that you want it, you're attracted to it. So I'm saying you're attracted. Oh, like it arouses me. Yes. Yeah. But literally maybe... like everything arouses me. So All what does right. that mean? Well, <laughs> that you're a fucking freak. Um... <laughs> no, so... but we want... Damn, this could be a what would you do, but um, I'll just tell y'all really quick. I was I saw this thing on Instagram. This man was talking about how he was like with his partner, and she wanted to use a dildo, so she was he was using it on her, and she started squirting, and without thinking, he pulls the dildo out and starts sucking on it. <sighs> and I thought that was actually fucking hilarious, just out of nowhere, because he was, was like, "Oh, let time? me let me taste you." But then, oh. next thing you know, oh. he's deep throating a dick. That's different. Oh, but he wants to taste her, so he put it in a better context. Right. Would that okay. throw you off? It's one thing if you sucked it, but if you start gagging on the dildo, <laughs> I think I think we need to have like a um a same gender loving man on our show because I don't think we've had many except for like our like some of our homies but i want to have someone that like studies this because we also were talking in the group chat about Dahmer and how netflix removed the lgbtq tag off of it Mm. and in that same clubhouse room it was mostly like queer people on the stage like there was a trans woman there were gay guys lesbians etc and um, they were talking about how Jeffrey Dahmer was not gay. And I thought it was pretty obvious that he was, but they were explaining that A, he he preyed on that community of so if you if you don't know the story, Jeffrey Dahmer is a deplorable serial killer that was murdering and eating um mm. his victims, and they were mostly gay and queer people of color, men of color. Mm -hmm. um so they were saying that he's not gay because he basically preyed on that community because it was like peak aids and they were poor so like 
people were just like, you know, didn't want to get involved with them, whatever stigmas there were. Um, yeah, but he and- preyed on men prior to that. Like he, this is what they were saying. He, he always and, started. He started with men. Yeah, he started with men, but he started with poor men because no, the first guy he killed was like in his town who was hitchhiking. He was oh, like eighteen. You watched so I didn't the watch show? the whole series. I yeah. couldn't watch it. I only watched the second episode. Oh, but anyways, that's what they were saying, and they were like, "It's not These niggas. It's don't not got the info." <laughs> they were like, "It's not." But also, let me finish. They were saying it's not that he was sexually attracted to them, even though he said he picked those people because he thought they were beautiful, etc. But they were like, it was more of a kink, not a yes. sexuality. Like he liked that their dead bodies. It was like necrophilia. Oh and like, God, yeah. sick. He so, also anyways, had I would something... love. Sorry, I was gonna say really quickly. He had he had something called uh, sacrophilia, which like he enjoys uh, the shininess of organs and body parts. <gasps> oh my god! And what? on the episode, his psychiatrist said that that's a common thing in men because the shininess and wetness is indicative of arousal. That makes in sense. a woman because they men like. I mean, not to speak too much on my bedroom behavior, but you know when you're all greased up and oily? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you think that's what that has to do with? The oil on the booty? Is Who knows? It's right. onion the booty. Correlated. Well, anyways. Okay, that's enough of the hotline bling. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Um... All right, y'all. It's time for the group chat. chat. All right. This week, our Black girl doing shit is Flo and Gala. And Flo, I don't know, I think you should know this, as a friend of the show, we have a segment called Black Girl Doing Shit where we celebrate a Black woman killing it. So on that episode, that is you. So Flo is stepping into the group chat today. If you don't know, Flo is a photographer from Harlem, New York, whose love for creativity and image making has brought her name to the forefront of the photography and creative world. With co-signs from Gucci Mane and Cardi B, who gave her her first start, Ngala has gone on in just a few years to see success behind the lens and in front of it as well. Whether that be on the Today Show, uh, having an MTV feature or a Vogue profile. In 2022, Flo became the first black woman Vogue commissioned to shoot for the Met Gala and received the visual arts honor at the Culture Creators 2022 annual brunch, all while creating impactful campaigns for the likes of Nike, Netflix, and more. So welcome to the group chat, Flo. Welcome. Flo has entered the group chat. Yes. We love the accolades. Oh, just... So many accolades. Someone's um, gotta do it. Heart. You know? <laughs> so Thanks for having me though. Of course. So Cardi B um is featured on Glorilla's new song Tomorrow 2. Have you heard it yet? I have. What do you think? It's a bop, right? Cardi is spitting. <laughs> The, 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 the verse is fire. The verse is fire. Do we, can we all do it at this at the same? Oh, okay. So oh, right, okay. left. Okay, one, right, left. I don't know if I can do that. It's right, left. Wait, no. Our right and left is gonna be different. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me trying to direct. All right. But you know, we tried. We <laughs> tried too much. But no, I I have her. I have heard it. I was actually just um like like right before I came on here just on Instagram I happened to see that ASAP Rocky brought her out at Rolling Loud I don't know if y'all saw that but that's cool because she posted a she posted a video so she did her own set and I guess she came back but she's really like she did she did the um she did the Memphis Grizzlies like official um basketball oh yeah I saw that oh wow that's cute and she's like you know she's you know she's doing it so I'm very happy for her and yeah the car thing was so cool they shot that in harlem i was i know i saw i was like come on literally a little north and south collabo (laughs) and just like (laughs) running the streets just the energy of the video is like a lot of a lot of fun but i asked that right (laughs) on the train Um, but I asked that though, Flo, because we know that as we mentioned in your bio, that Cardi was one of the first people to that you that you shot with, like a celebrity. Um, and just curious how that all came to be and what it's like working with, with Cardi B. Yeah, um, definitely like probably the most asked question of my career, like <laughs> what is working with Cardi B like? Yes. Um, I, you know, um, I always say this, but it's really just like God's timing is the best time. And I feel like mm-hmm. it was really divine. Like she, you know, 2017, Bodai Yellow came out. I had the opportunity to um, be 
have my work put in front of the executive that has been at the forefront of a lot of her career um, from the beginning when she was signed to Atlantic. And so it just sort of was very, you know, like I said, great timing. And I was able to shoot BTS for her videos and kind of really see what it looks like to be a global star mm. um, from a very personal level. And um, yeah, I definitely don't take it for granted. I feel like the amount of uh, images that I've been able to create, just like being a fly on the wall or flow on the wall, like mm -hmm. I would say, um, really is something I'm proud of. So yeah, she's super, um, I mean, she's just like, I mean, she's a regular person, obviously, but she's super just, it's just interesting, just interesting to watch like her as a human being, in addition mm -hmm. to, you know, her like in front of the camera and like just what that switch on and off like can look like, you know, very much a professional, very much um, a star. Yeah. In, my eyes in so many people's. Totally. In thinking about this, I was really reflecting on this idea of stardom and celebrity like I think it's a catch-22 because I feel like sometimes there's this critique that Americans especially are like obsessed with fame and celebrities and everything that they do but then some of these celebrities are like like Cardi B are like stars they have star power they create work they're artists um I don't know I just wondered if you had any kind of thoughts on celebrity being that you work so closely with celebrities and photograph them um, I mean, it's a kind of like interesting question because mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, everyone kind of knows what it's like to be like a fan of something from like a young age, whether it's like, you know, like Peppa Pig, you know, celebrity, <laughs> or like, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> or like, or like, you know, nowadays, like even like the TikTok celebrity, like that fascinates me. Just the fact that like celebrity is such a niche it's so relative, it's so subjective. I used to um, kind of joke about how, like if someone plays golf and is like a huge golfer, I have, I know nothing about golf. That person could be walking down the block and be, you know, the biggest PGA tour person. And it's like, it's all relative, it's all subjective. Mm. So for me, I think one thing that's very interesting about the way that my relationship with celebrity has worked is I feel like a lot of the people that I've been able to shoot are sort of like iconic, like big, like kind of mm -hmm. like staple celebrity people. And I think mm -hmm. that that has really been like, you know, obviously Gucci Mane, like he wasn't just like a rapper. He was like a legend, you know, Cardi B wasn't just like someone who came in the game. She like made history, like, yeah. you know, these people, you know, Simone Biles recently I got to shoot. She's not just a gymnast. She's like Simone Biles, you An know, icon. So, ex exactly. Icon is a good word. Yeah. So, like, my reverence and like my respect for that title um I think I definitely see the different levels of it and I think in my work um even this year I got the chance to shoot Venus Williams for um the Hollywood Reporter stuff like that is like you know it's like it's not just work it's like these are these are like these are these people that are like the ones you know so yeah I don't know if I answered your question. No, but... you did. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for going there with me. It's a little obscure and you call yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it's like, and then it's like, what does it say about me or us? Like that we, you know, how do we, how do we value these things? Like, are, exactly. am, I, am I screaming and crying at a show? Am I right. waiting outside of a, lo a hotel lobby? Am I on set for three hours waiting for one person to show up? You know, like, yes. what is that? And what does it mean to us? And why? Yeah. Why does it why? mean to tears, right? Like, oh my God, when I, First saw Kanye West in concert, I had a fucking breakdown. Like I would have oh, had to wow. be removed. I was hyperventilating. It was crazy. He just oh, like wow. gave me the spirit. Wow. It was like more, it was in part, I think, the fame and like seeing somebody like that in person. It, it's, yeah. It's yeah. And then yeah. it's like all that his music meant to me at the time, you know. That and also makes me reaction. think about <laughs> really to anyone? No. <laughs> have you guys? Or have you? Yeah, I have. Who? I'm a huge Jay Z fan. I mean, that now he, he's been saying some problematic shit, but I literally left school. <laughs> I was like maybe 12, and I called my dad, like, Jay Z's doing a pop up concert in the park. I need to leave school. And he was like, Absolutely, it's Jay Z. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's fucking That's Jay Z. Really cool. <laughs> but it makes me think about, um, Sorry, Glenn, if I'm derailing. No, you know, go. We have an episode plans and stuff, but <laughs> also just say it off the cuff, like in thinking about the importance of photography um, in a way that it 
almost, I mean, not almost the way that it is telling history. Like it's a mm-hmm. moment in time. Is that something that you think about when you think about when people go back and look at your work, like mm-hmm. the, that significance? It's, it's sort of like, oh, it's, it's kind of like impossible to really fully digest because it sort of would be like thinking in the future and you just don't know, you know, like you don't actually know what that's going to look like and feel like as I've gotten even just like two years out of, you know, a video or three years or four years out of like, you know, certain videos and certain things I've done, I think that sort of started to give me a glimpse into what that legacy and what that archival experience will look like. Like, um, the other day I was speaking on a panel and I said something like, you know, these fan pages that exist will be like happy one year anniversary to this video or happy two year anniversary mm-hmm. to this moment. And that has started to give me a glimpse mm-hmm. into like the historical significance of like the work. But honestly, when I'm in it, I, I'm, I'm not thinking about it like that. Honestly, I, I think I kind of downplay a little bit of it sometimes. And people have to remind me, like, make sure you're archiving your work properly. Make sure you're backing up your hard drives. You're shooting very historic musical moments or cultural moments and I think yeah that's what has helped me be like okay yeah like this isn't just like click click this is no part of history but in the moment moment you don't really think about it I think you're just working or it feels like I'm just working yeah yeah talk to us more about what you're thinking about like as you're shooting particularly in portraiture because I know that's a form of photography you really love yeah I mean I started off like my first real, you know, love for photo came from doing street portrait, street photography, and then like self portraits. So I feel like this connection with like eye contact has always fascinated me, and like the stories that eyes tell, the the things that you can feel in images. Like I remember, and I always say, like the first image that made me emotional was a Gordon Parks image that, um, and Gordon Parks is like a legendary photographer um, and is, is uh, just very impactful to a lot of young photographers and photographers, you know, overall. But specifically at the time I was like, maybe like 22 or something, I was interning, um, 21, 22, I was interning at a library. And um, just like the ability to be moved by like, like a a, a face, a moment, Mm -hmm. a portrait, you know, a a proper portrait. Um, And I don't say proper in a, like, I I don't know. I don't even know why I said that, but like, there's something about like capturing someone the right way, I feel Mm -hmm. like, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that is, um, that is kind of why I love portraiture. It's this ability to see someone for like how I, how I really feel like they need to be captured. Mm -hmm. And that's, really where I started from I think seeing myself like you know I didn't get the chance to like work with people or be commissioned I had to just like use my own resources my family my friends like I remember kind of like street casting people here and there like old, older photos of mine or like individuals I would meet you know and ask to shoot so I just like the idea of capturing someone's essence capturing someone the way that I think that they best should be captured and to me portraits are just really amazing ways to honor someone's spirit yeah I was just gonna say that do you think there's something spiritual yeah absolutely absolutely yeah because I I feel like one photographer could take this like several photographers could take the same photo of a person Mm -hmm. and the emotion that a viewer would get from it would be totally different depending on who was holding the camera and that's the beauty of it right it's like perspective is everything I think if all four of us were given a camera to take a photo, you know, in the same room, we would all take different images and it's based off mm-hmm. who we are and how we see the world. You know, we're all women of color, you know, but we have different experiences. We're from different places and that dictates how we see things, that dictates like how we believe things should be seen. Even the editing process is really fascinating because that translation from the camera to like how you think it should appear, you know, how you crop it. Is it black and white? Do you want to saturate it? Do you want to, you know, zoom in? Like even that says a lot about perspective and like how you believe things should be displayed and, and seen. So yeah, photog- I mean, photography is so fascinating in so many ways. Like you said, like psychologically, I mean, spiritually, psychologically, historically. It's, it's amazing. And speaking of perspective, 
I feel like growing up in Harlem and being a New Yorker probably just has a lot of influence on your work and how you see the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you have any reflections on that, especially with your beginnings in street photography about the things that inspire you, the pulse of the city, what that like, gets you going. Yeah. Um, I, oh, your camera shifted. I don't know. Sorry, it was just, yeah. No, it's okay. Sorry, <laughs> the, 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 those are the photographer. The photographer is like, <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. I, I've been thinking about this a lot um, and just exploring, like I'm going through like a really intense reckoning of like myself and like healing and like life shit right now. Can I curse on here? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and one thing that, I'm always reflecting on, but I think I've been able to reflect on even more powerfully now, like in this kind of stage of my life than I'm in than before is just how, you know, being African in a black community, being black in a white community, being African in a white community, being black, I mean, like it, there's so many, you know, being yep. a photographer, being a figure skater, being, you know, all of those identities um, and that melting pot of um, my, my, myself that melting pot of America that melting pot of Harlem um within the black experience is a big part of what is inspired like how I see the world and I think um Harlem you know things are changing here and I really I'm like calling on myself to even just be you know continue to do the work I'm doing and find ways to empower my own community and the community that I feel shaped me but it's not what it used to be Mm -hmm. And that is um, kind of like what it's like with a lot of parts of New York. Things are changing communities, right? But when you think about your childhood, when you think about like the people who would check on you, see you grow up, like always see you around or like your friends, um, your local leaders, like the church you went to, the after school you went to, things like that. Those kind of repeated impressions and those interactions over time, I think really shape a person. Totally. I'm, I'm very happy to say that like um, for me in Harlem, especially because I was raised like on Lennox Ave, like my parents had a store. And so we, I was like a block kid. I was outside playing double Dutch. I was like at the park. Like um, I think that really exposed me to lots of different kinds of personalities, like the, the hood niggas, you know, the <laughs> entrepreneurs, like the, you know, Sylvia's restaurant was right across the street. Yes. Even, um, you know, just that, like that cultural immersion. I can't remember every single experience, but like, there's no way I got like this without being a com- combination and real culmination of all of those things. So, oh, yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. The hood niggas who are entrepreneurs now. Right. <laughs> all the time. Nah, because um, they do be. <laughs> no, this is a total aside, but I was talking to my sister about something like, oh, can you give me some advice on like how to make some moves in my new job? And she was like, you only answer what you're asked. She said, you never dated a drug dealer? And I was like, no, did you? Girl, your That's sister said that? That's actually like great advice too. <laughs> Wait, say it again in case we missed it. Basically, she was like, you only need to only- divulge what you're asked. Like yeah. you don't need to give away to any too much information I love but that. she but she was like you never dated a drug dealer like that's like a whole one-on-one and I was like no I I, I have not <laughs> Actually, I, I, have. I haven't he put me on to none of that yeah the, the only honestly I I only had one boyfriend before I like met like my partner and I feel like and it was a hood nigga and I feel like <laughs> I remember the first time I saw a gun oh. and I remember like, I shouldn't start there. Sorry, that sounds so much darker than the relationship. Yeah, I, was like, I was like, oh, you was really like with her. Like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Sorry, let me, <laughs> don't put that in the thing. Sorry, I just, I was, I was going off your tangent and just being like, you know, it's funny because like the one song experience I had, he was like an African hood nigga, which is another niche of right. hood nigga, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> Not just me being like, ooh. But <laughs> yeah, like, it's sort of like funny for girls like us because it's like, I'm hood, but like, I'm not, doing that with y'all but I'm hood you know what I'm saying like right. don't test me but like I can you know it's like it's like the the double consciousness oh yeah not I don't like to double consciousness it's double consciousness someone yeah. told me don't use codes like someone I photographed once an amazing um like senior citizen who was like uh working at double day and ad age like in the 60s I shot mm. her for Harper's Bazaar and she was like it's not code switching it's double consciousness and I love that but like 
there's a gift and there's levels to this stuff. But even like, you know, to your point though, Shade, Shade um, the hood niggas are entrepreneurs. They have that, like they know, they have that mindset. They have a they different have- type of double consciousness, maybe. I don't know. But you, <laughs> I was going to get into that though, because you went to Horace Mann, right? Yes. So oh. Kelsey and Sade also the reaction. Did a little, the little yeah. life, the yeah. boarding school life. The I went to boarding life. school. So that's a I mean, what was that like for you, Flo? Girl, you gotta be more specific. That that's better. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I don't know like, anything I'll, about hold that. On, I'll, world. I'll jump in. Are you okay? No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish I had the um they sent they sent the alumni uh like the donor thing this year, I got a full page in there. And I'm like, this is exactly what the fuck that financial aid was about. It was about people looking in there and seeing a girl with locks. They were full locks, but still, they gave me an assembly earlier this year. And it's like, damn, like I'm literally in this, you know, actually in that, um, in my, in that bio slide on mm-hmm. the PDF, the top right picture is from that presentation at like, at Horace Mann. And so um, for me, it was honestly, it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. I gave up a little bit through I experienced the loss of a parent my first year in it shifted the whole experience in ways mm-hmm. I think that I'm again because I'm like really doing this healing work right now mm-hmm. I'm really able to look at my life and be like that's why that was so hard you know mm-hmm. I graduated horse man with a 2.8 GPA I wanted to go to Wesleyan so bad I cried in my Latin class but I didn't get in but it's like just because you apply ED doesn't mean that they're going to accept you with a 2.8 GPA. Yeah, yeah. But I tried it, you know, but everything happens for a reason. I went to city college after that. I had a lot of like this imposter syndrome because everyone was at MIT and Stanford mm. and Penn. Mm. And I was like, you know, not that I don't deserve it, but I just know that I might be a little smarter than some of these, some of these kids. And I just, <laughs> It's like the politics of it, I think were very interesting, but I'm very grateful for the experience. One, because it exposed me to photography, the mm. endowment and the, you know, the financial opportunities that a private school has. And, you know, you guys know, like just the exposure to that is just something that my parents or our parents just knew you couldn't get at, you know, a local level. So my parents pushed me. Um, I did this program called Prep for Prep which is what got mm-hmm. me into Horace Man, And I feel like they just saw, you know, the opportunity for education and empowerment. And I really feel like that's a huge part of why I've been able to even navigate a career because I'm able to articulate myself. I can communicate well. I know how to, you know, stand up for myself. I'm not intimidated by, you know, my complexion, my, uh, who I like, you know, the things that I feel like people still kind of have to work through. I had to deal with that. Like, when I was yeah. a teenager. So it, yeah. it, there's a kind of entitlement I have to spaces. There's a swag that you walk in with that some people may not get, you know, right. whether it's Harlem or Horace Man, but it's sort of like, it makes you who you are, which is unique. So I'm, I'm grateful for it, but it definitely came with some of its ups and downs, but I wouldn't change my experience for the world. So, yeah. I don't know how open you're feeling today. If you're not feeling super open, then we can you know, I'm feeling open. It's a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it was Thursday. I'd be like, no, bitch. Right. I'd be like, um, <laughs> but I feel like people look to you and they're like, oh my God, from Lo and Gala, like so accomplished. She, you know, was at the Met Gala. She photographed Cardi B. And you and I have had these conversations like one on one where you're like, yo, I'm having this reckoning. I'm like, mm-hmm. so much is changing. I'm like figuring so much out about myself. And people would expect, like, her life must be amazing and perfect and she must have it all together so like how are you navigating that can I interject really quick before we start just to double down on this I told a friend of mine that I was inter- that we were interviewing to you today uh, another photographer and he's like her work is amazing and also she's such a young hottie like she looks <laughs> good in outfits she she could wear a fit she just looks like she has it all together just a bad bitch moving up through the world so just to I add to that perceptive perception that kind of Shadi was getting that. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. Shout out to your <laughs> friend for, for, for telling you that. Um, I mean, I'll I'll say this: I, imposter syndrome is a bitch. It really is, mm. and it's just you know you kind of have to just like allow yourself to like go through it and unpack 
you know, what it is that's keeping you from realizing like you, that you are who you already think you are or that people, like people literally see me different than I see myself. Sometimes I'll Google my, like I'll Google myself and it's become like this kind of like weird, like it's like an auto habit. Like, I almost just need to know like, oh, did this article come out? Like, you know, like sometimes when I actually shoot things, I like to try and see like if it went live and I'll just kind of like look it up, like look up my name to see if, you know, I've been credited or things went up. But it's just really like a double life, I think, for me. And I've been saying that since I was in college because um, my career started when I was like a junior in college. That's when I was in the, like I was in a video that led to the Cardi and the Gucci and the Atlantic work. And I, I've talked about that in like lots of interviews and stuff. But then, like even then I felt like people were like, whoa, like, you know, you, you know, you were in Senegal, you know, for Thanksgiving break and like shooting this like fashion, like, you know, like, like fashion, um, I was shooting this like fashion campaign thing. That was like my first like international trip for work. You know, people would be like, oh, you were Gucci man. Like people would kind of like, like tell me about the things that they were seeing on social media. And, yeah. and of course, but I feel like I've always kind of like had this like disassociation with like what it looks like versus what it is and I think that's actually a great thing because it kind of keeps me real I feel like Mm. people um appreciate that about me but it can definitely be like I said with the imposter syndrome comment it can definitely be kind of sad I think sometimes I I feel like I'll I'll look back at these years of my life and kind of like regret not you know really walking in that Mm. um but I don't know I feel like I know that I have the potential to really, you know, be that hottie, be that person. And I think that's what this reckoning is going to like produce or like, that's what, right. you know, me, my frustration will, you know, it has to start from the inside, not the outside. But I think at the same time, when you're in the entertainment industry, which is so, you know, secular and materialistic, yes. you can, you can be really um, distracted and caught up with thinking that, you know, just because it, it looks like what it is that that's what it is and it's just not like Mm. nothing's ever what it seems so you know I can't help but be so like talkative almost like overshare like that's who I am I think even in my work that's what comes through like that realness Mm. like I actually don't really like to sugarcoat things even getting on this I was like shopping on makeup and I was like no because like this is how I feel right now I actually Mm -hmm. feel this like this raw you feel this stunning Okay. (laughs) Thank you. But um, yeah, I I I got a little lost in the question, but yeah, honestly, it's it's a little bit of a struggle. But I believe I'm going to find my happy place with like what I know I am and what it looks like I am. Like like you know, I sent you guys this what 15, 20 page deck or whatever, and it's like I still feel like there's inner work to be done. There's shit I don't understand. Like I'm very anxious. I'm very pressured with a lot of things and it's like yeah nothing's ever what it really seems so it's just important I think for people to talk about that and be honest about that so people know people aren't perfect we appreciate that rawness because I feel like a lot of our listeners like not to gas us but they really listen to the show in like an aspirational way and that's amazing right but at the same time like we definitely want people to understand that there's there's always that inner turmoil. There's always a lot that you're like navigating and working through. And yeah, you being super raw and honest, I know someone will listen and be like, damn, okay. Yeah. Like, I can do this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That damn is, it's so, yeah. People will respond to my stories and be like, are you okay? And I'll be like, do you really want me to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> life, be life in and you're alive. You're a human being. And life I, be and- life in. To your point, Shade, like, you know, we gave you the Black Girl Doing Shit title at the top of the show. It's not only for all that you have accomplished, but it's just for who you are. Like, we have all the, we're all Black girls doing shit in our own way. If we're just getting up and trying, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, kind of back into that bad bitchery or just sort of like <laughs> how your, 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 your moment, because um, I know you just shaved your head recently. Did you know I was going to go there? Oh my god, I look so I, good. I love it so much. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And you is this your first time shaving? Yeah. 
I'm looking peasy already. My mom keeps being like, brush your hair. You need to train the pattern. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I see. Well, maybe peasy is a look. Is it a look? It can be. Nobody said nothing. I was trying to find something to say. <laughs> wait, wait, it can be a look. But if you, wait, would, you would you date a guy with peasy hair? Let's, you know? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I'm like, I have nothing she, to say. Uh, my, man, my man is bald, so I have nothing to say about him. <laughs> Especially if his face was like perfect. I, I have dated men with all kinds of interesting <laughs> hairstyles. So, yeah. It's ironic because I, I grew up in a hair braiding salon, so you would think I would know better, but part of me cutting it off was just being frustrated with my like i just i i got frustrated with like just maintaining all that shit i was like this is too much and I then that short hair coming to keep fucking growing and you're like what the fuck mm-hmm. <laughs> have any of you ever shaved your head never not shaved oh. but i went pretty short someone told me that every woman should do it i think like so. shave bald down but like not everyone thing. has the head for it yeah, you, never know you, know get. You, don't you don't know try right and then you might try and look like a crazy person and then you just get your little wig <laughs> Good. i tried I'm the excited. one of those i'm excited to do wigs more though i'm not gonna lie i feel like that's gonna be really fun because they'll they'll lay better obviously since oh yeah you know but then also it'll be fun to just like just like explore that which i kind of have done a little bit before but with no hair versus having like corners underneath it should just be a it's gonna lay more. different lay yeah much yeah. flatter the lace will be yeah. flat. Um, did you did you shave it yourself or did you go to a salon? Yeah. Oh, you did it yourself. I literally cut it in the bathroom and I did it too low. So then I was like, fuck, I have to like shave it shorter. So I was like bald hiding <laughs> in my house for a week. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Literally, it was like my skin. Like it was like, like I had to just go down and just do, you know, the whole thing. And then I had to hide out for like a week and a half. Or you, like, just, you were just like, you know what? Fuck this hair. And you just started. Like I took out my, I had cornrows. Cause I, I thought I was going to go into the summer with blonde braids. Like I had had blonde braids. Mm-hmm. Like even when I came to y'all's thing, like I had the corn, like blonde cornrows. And I really liked that. But I think I took out my hair and I just feel like, well, one, also my edges we're starting to get affected because I wasn't maintaining like just like the greasing up like the basic stuff you know and I hate to say that but like I just was like too lazy or like traveling mm-hmm. or made excuses you know but honestly I never really like and like I said I never really enjoyed like the maintenance process of, of all of it um so I just kind of also started to see that my edges were being affected so that was a big part of it because I was like dang like I don't want to lose my edges and then I also just felt like um just emotionally just like where I was at like with life and stuff like it was feeling like I needed to do something that was that you know cathartic or cleansing music. yeah yeah so it was I it believe was, it yeah yeah Oof. but it, it grows it does grow fast though I was thinking if I should get it like when it was low like I went to um I went to black fashion um the black fashion fair event at Brooklyn Museum and it was oh like, yeah it was the first time a lot of people had seen me or a lot of my peers had seen me. Oh, I saw you that night, actually. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And it was, like, really nice to, like, see the reactions. But I realized that even it being, like, low versus, like, even this feels like more hair than, like. Yeah. You know? It's, like, even the little stuff. So I'm debating if I should cut it or if I should let it, like, just let it grow a bit more so I could just start breathing it again. Or if I should, if I want to do locks. I think I might go into getting, like, dreadlocks or locking my hair um so it should be interesting but I I, I I like I like being received for like you know people see my face I've gotten a lot of really great compliments on my yes my cheekbones yeah lucky you it works <laughs> it's working <laughs> you don't know if you don't try Unless you're also, are you trying to tell us something about the shape of your head no I have I have like a little dip back here I don't think it would work for me <laughs> um but I'm those? I'm also curious because I went back home and my mom and I we were talking about like family and like my dad and she was showing me all these like pictures in her photo album and I was like damn I don't even keep a photo album do you print photos and like keep them in an album I do not no I don't I barely yeah I, honestly I barely really print my work and it's it's kind of crazy because people also will like ask like 
to like buy it and stuff and I'll just be like I don't really like do that you know and it's kind of like very millennial with me I'm not gonna lie it's very like oh it's on Instagram the world's seen it it's fine you know I'm like no like that's just not how it works like I never I never even got like business cards made can you imagine like I just kind of like well we have a whole thing about business cards in the group chat it's a whole Uh, thing I'm like got them (laughs) really we got them we go to events and never have them (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now there's like a whole little like qr code you someone can scan, scan. Okay. Yeah, yeah now we're getting like down the millennial fucking rabbit hole but i, I, mean, I do it's interesting there's that you something don't about the physicality so. though of like you know to go back to your question of like like a print photo i think right. when i have i feel like when i have seen my work like printed even like if it's um like I did this thing with Falaka earlier this year, which was really cool. They um, honored like three black photographers for Black History Month um, on this like soul list. And they spelled it S-O-L-E. Mm, and they printed my work out in these huge, like all of our work in this, these huge prints. There's something about like the size and like being able to like touch it and see it that's really different than just like looking at it on a computer screen. So I I, I would encourage myself or you even asking that, you know, just reminds me that I want to print my work from my workout more but I don't do it enough and have a show yeah yeah one day <laughs> one day I think a show gives me anxiety is that bad I'm like I'm like oh my god that means planning I'm like oh just gotta get you an assistant right yeah. exactly exactly yeah. but well, I love going that into- question Chelsea oh, go ahead, no I was gonna yeah. say I feel like we should all have some just like Polaroids, printed photos that we keep, like the way your parents show you like old photo albums, like this is so-and-so because we got to do that with our kids. Like I I would love for them to have like physical photos and be like, this is, this is Miss Flo. Right, exactly. (laughs) There's something different about like flipping through an album than like clicking through something and like the wear on the photo. If you wrote a little note on the back of it, you labeled the day it was taken. It like adds something, you know? I, I do have some, I do have a stack of Polaroids. So I have a, a good amount of Polaroids from just like when I travel, I like, I do like to bring my Polaroid camera, like little Instax. So mm-hmm. I definitely agree with you on like, but you know, even that, that, that technically counts. I think that, ta- that counts. That counts. So that counts. <laughs> um, going into, cause you mentioned that you were a part of the, um, that Foot Locker activation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was thinking about these like ideas of, I don't want to frame this. Like when companies do things for like Black History Month, basically I'm trying to get to the fact that you were the first Black woman to shoot for the Met Gala. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I was, I couldn't get there. She's a writer. She had to make it a whole fucking thing. I was really trying to get there. I just I love it though. She's like, question. basically I'm trying to get to the Met Gala. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the, we're, now we have arrived there. First Black <laughs> woman to shoot the Met Gala. How which is shocking to, to me right and that's also what I wanted to get at too right and this idea of like the firsts and the complications behind that like what an amazing incredible opportunity to have shot the Met Gala and to go into that space but then also there's something to, to be said of like about being the first one like you have it in your bio on Instagram but then it's like damn I'm the first one you know? yeah and yeah. also lucky them for having you there right mm-hmm. yeah it's it's like it's funny because since since um since may like i think i have only done like a handful of like interviews or panels um and even like like this question that's come up like it's funny to hear people you know of course be like dang you're the first in a way that's like like dang vogue but then also you know one way i've responded is being like you know i choose not to look at like it from that perspective like yes right. like that's something that you know anyone could say and I feel like even when it first happened like someone left like kind of crazy comment or like tweeted something that was like just like you know just like you know there's like haters on the internet and it, yeah. it was like a response to like the Vogue tweet or whatever and I was just like yes like it was the first person to do that that looked like that but like why would you sit here and and not celebrate that person and instead choose to like look at the negativity. I mean, it's totally. important to look at the history of it, but mm-hmm. for me, um, I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a huge opportunity. It was probably like the biggest, uh, you know, career high for me, um, ever. And, um, it came, like, I literally remember, like I got the email from the editor. Amazing. I was like, 
I was on set. Um, I was on a, on day two of a set. Um, I was in Harlem. I was actually getting my makeup done because I was like gonna get my photo taken um, after. Like I was the last person to be photographed on this like project I was doing. All that to say, I just was like, okay, guys, like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta share something. Like I just like shared it with the room, and um, I mean. I don't know, I guess I'm kind of speechless. I don't even know like really where to start, but it's it's just to be able to have the respect, I think, of like a institution or a platform like Vogue. Um, I've said this, you know, when I was, when I've been interviewed as well about it, like, you know, I learned that even to be approved to like shoot it, like Anna Wintour had to actually like vet the, you know, people wow. that were going to be there obviously but I That's remember being like crazy. like wait like she you know and even like seeing her there like looks like, like you know in person and like all the celebrities like for me it was really Hillary Clinton for me I'm not gonna lie like that really? was really like, yeah yeah but it, it was I don't know maybe it was like it's like the president thing it was mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton for me it was um who else was it for me it was like the Jared Leto um Alessandro she double moment that yes that, you know and when I when I saw them, they were talking to Billie Eilish. Like it was it was like the Billy it was a Billie Eilish, Kendall Jenner, Haley Bieber bathroom moment that I got. Like there was there's certain moments that really like you know come to mind first and foremost. But overall, I mean, like I said, to be like vetted for something like that is crazy. And I really um yeah, I just I'm really blessed to have had the opportunity. And I feel like uh, I hope that it it serves as like a, I don't know, a source of inspiration for others of just like, you know, if you say you can do something, if you want to do something, you know, you need to go ahead and go after that. Like I kind of manifested that. And even when I posted the Met Gala post that like I put a screenshot in 2016 of me DMing like this guy from BFA and being like, hi, my name is Flo and Gala. I know you don't know me from anything, but I really want to shoot the Met Gala for BFA. Look at that. Like literally in 2016, wow. you know, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, and then you shot it for Vogue like wild and I do hear you totally on what you were saying before like about that first idea like when I wrote it even the question down it's like it in some ways it feels undermining because it's just yeah. it's beautiful like it's incredible and it's also like you got to shoot it oh that part too like you were there like it was your you. work it was you right. yeah. that was there like that's amazing I you. I don't want to I don't want to be this person but like literally when you talk about getting that email like your face like lit up and <laughs> And I lit up too, because like we've had those moments yes. and I feel like it's those moments that like we really have to cherish, right? When you're just like, holy shit. And like, as they just keep coming and keep coming and the, the point you made about like sending the DM and then like it all coming full circle. Like, I feel like those are the moments that we have to cherish because it's just like, I don't know. I don't yeah. have words for it. No, just- I, I love that you said that because there is a, there is a thing, there is like sensation of, you know, like the notification coming in and it's like you know black girls texting x whatever or like you know whatever like whatever the subject yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, Damn, yes. you know there's like a thing that comes with that yeah like for sure so I mean it's it's, it's kind of fun like it's kind of fun we're really blessed to be in a space where our like opinions and our voices and like our style and like sisterhood like matters and can be monetized but like it's not for that like you guys are authentically being yourselves like I'm just like observing things but to be seen for like the value in it by you know respected platforms is definitely something that's not to be taken lightly and like like you said Lynn that's why I can't like you know take that negative route because it's just sort of like we want me to do sit here and complain about being the the first like you know it's someone had to be the first so I'm grateful for it you know exactly yeah yeah oh girl mm-hmm. you're super inspiring the whole journey I was I don't want to ask a sort of cliche question but out of curiosity genuinely what does your self-care practice look like uh that's what I'm working on yeah right now I, can you What's imagine it look like in this moment honestly um the first thing I want to say is prayer, but I feel like that's not like the real answer. That's like what I want it to be, but that's not like what's actually happening. The first thing honestly. my self-care practice looks like <laughs> now, um, honestly, it's been drinking more water, really. Mm-hmm. Like I genuinely like did not like water. 
honest. Like, <laughs> the I girls like, don't be liking like, water. I would kind of like brag about it, like as like a like I was like, you know, but I I was like a tropical fantasy, you know. Remember those? Yeah, yeah. Girl. Yes. Oh, like, yeah. Girl. <laughs> she said she was from the street. I love myself ever. I was I was Twitter waters, man. You know, you know what I mean. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's like it's like a little a little hood, a little horse, man. But <laughs> um, that's 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 the cool. title of your memoir. <laughs> <laughs> but um I feel like I just kind of kept going like I just kept going like I eat whatever I do whatever like you know I wouldn't gain that much weight I wouldn't like I didn't feel that tired like I would you know flight sleep but you know I, I genuinely don't think I really like I would hear the self-care word I remember even in like 2020 or during the pandemic Glossier had asked me about sharing about my self-care routine I remember being like fuck like like what? Like what does that look like? And I like looked at the things. It's like, like tropical I, fantasy. Child. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the things that were in my no no. The tropical fantasy was like childhood though. Just so you know. Oh, okay, like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't, I haven't touched one of those in like a decade or more. So just so you know. But the, but the roots the roots of my self care right, were right, tropical fantasy. Right. <laughs> um. But yeah, I remember just even being like fuck like. Glossier wants me to talk about my self care, like, and I literally remember looking at other people's like articles and like their, you know, bathroom shelves or like you know all yeah. of the, mm-hmm. and stuff to the and gloss feel, and yeah, and feeling like I was supposed to like like have, have that, a ten step like, skincare routine or some shit. I just wasn't there yet. And I think that like I'm now at a place where I'm realizing through just kind of being a little stubborn and kind of ignoring my self care for like. The, the you know for the most part of like my career and like my 20s that you know stuff catches up like I'm tired I have like lower back pain sometimes I'm like I'm 27 like what the fuck like this is this is you're 27 yeah I'm 27 I know girl. but it but it's like it's like I I'm, I'm 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 seeing though a little bit of like you know I have cavities like you know regular human being shit but it's like you really have oh, to I take you you have to take care of yourself. No, for real. And it's like when you when you are on body. Set, when you're on sets and it's like there's free Henny, there's free, <laughs> there's free Don Julio, there's oh, like I remember I did BTS for this video. It was the weekend, Nas and Belly. And the weekend has like vodka on his writer, like Grey Goose. And mm-hmm. he didn't take the like, Grey Goose, like when he left the trailer. And like I literally remember like taking it back to like whatever air, like the place I was staying at, and like being like, okay, yeah, I can drink like you know turn like, out but why would like a whole bottle of vodka i'm i'm like <laughs> girl you know so even stuff like that just like partying like lifestyle shit like for real i just didn't think about it you know even recently i'm trying to stop or i've, I've decided to quit smoking because i'm like i can't like i can't keep up with my body my body's showing me like it's showing me signs of all that stuff mm-hmm. so when's your birthday answer, i'm a gemini me <laughs> Good, exactly. Because no, you know that's, no, that's what she wanted say, to know. You, no, if you <laughs> right, just, just turned ask. 27, I want to know when she's having her solar return, actually. <laughs> Wait, is your solar <laughs> return, is your solar return like your golden birthday? No, girl, that's no. when she start getting crazy at the age that you at. <laughs> oh, yo, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The, sad, the Saturn return. The Saturn yes. return. Girl, when I was going yes. through, like, I, I learned that word for the first time about like two months ago. And I was like, this is a thing. And I literally oh, looked it up. But yeah, I think that is what I'm going through. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's like 27 to 29. 27 stuff starts getting real crazy. But you know what? I met TD Jakes on my birthday. Like if that's, if that's not confirmation. What? I was, I was working on my birthday and TD Jakes officiated a wedding I was shooting. And I, I have the selfie and everything. Like oh, that's crazy. If, if that's not a sign that like, you know. Things are gonna was get it better. A celebrity it wedding? It was. It was. It was the um. It was Shawnee and Keon. Shawnee Henderson, who Shawnee was on the on basketball on Basketball Wives. Oh. She used to be Shaquille Shawnee, O'Neal. Shawnee O'Neal. Shawnee O'Neal. Oh, O'Neal. Hey. Well, no, not Shawnee anymore. O'Neal. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Formerly Shawnee O'Neal. Formerly. Uh, formerly known as. Yes. But yeah, it was. It was late. Ilana Adams was there. The Isley Brothers performed. Like that should. Be That's awesome. insane. Wait. Wait. What? <laughs> Who does she get married to? His name is Keon Hand- Henderson. He's a pastor. Okay. It was mad so like there. she has her own money. But she does. I, I was going to say she got bread too, but I'm just thinking mm. like- No, I was just curious of... she married. <laughs> yeah. 
she wow. it was beautiful her kids I mean she has like a whole space jam squad of like I say beautiful. all of them kids yeah, yeah yeah but it was it was fly but anyway yeah my birthday is May 28th I'm a Gemini and I'm working on my self-care routine <laughs> love it <laughs> I need hi 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 flow hi flow <laughs> self-care anonymous so much oh my gosh well listen I love the honesty I love the transparency and yeah, I'm gonna get easy. getting better every day I don't know Glenn if you had any other questions no 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 I was gonna take your time out. yeah take out. Take and I'm out. so excited for your journey and like what mm-hmm. else is up like so next much more to for you yeah if there's anything we should look out for uh yes. we'll tell our followers where to follow you um well wait sorry was that a question or yeah 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 <laughs> is there anything we should look out for and tell our followers where to follow you. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm just like really about to just pivot and just kind of start to actually share more of like who I am, like how I think. I think a lot of people know me as a photographer, but I'm really like interested in strategy. I'm really interested in creative direction. I'm really interested mm. in um, like, honestly, I'm like a huge self-help buff. And I think um, like starting a YouTube, doing a podcast, like, um, talking more about fashion and like I really love clothes I love thrifting like all of those kinds of other things that I think I you know haven't actually found a way to put out because I felt like okay let me share the photography photography mm-hmm. I think people can look forward to um, me just kind of like using my voice a bit more and using my platform to um really like be myself and mm-hmm. that's partly why um like my, my website is even locked right now because I'm trying to find a way to sort of like not archive but just kind of like properly package like what the past five years of my life feels like it has been um in a more holistic way that's not just like a portfolio but I want people to go on my site and see like you know what I've done with like you know my figure skating in Harlem um community um which matters to me like uh, I want people to see like you know more of like my thoughts like I want to start writing more and putting like you know, finding a way to maybe not blog necessarily, but maybe blog or like just write. Like I have a lot of thoughts that I think just stay in my head. So people can look forward to just hearing a bit more about like what I love to do and who I am outside yeah. of photography. Um, and my Instagram and website are Flo and Gala, F-L-O-N-G-A-L-A. Like Thank that. you so that much, Flo. Yes. I love that. Ooh, that could be an episode title. Oh, oh. <laughs> wait, what, wait, what did you say? I missed it. Episode of what's the title? The evolution of flow. Flow. Ooh. <laughs> Breaking title. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're gonna workshop it. Um, <laughs> well, you know. thank you so much for joining us, stepping into the group chat, and we're excited to see all that's to come, girl. Thank you, yes. thank you, y'all. Thank you for the space. I mean, it's, it's honestly, I'm. Just, I feel like I'm, I'm talking to people I'm friends with, so it's very comfortable to even just be that candid yeah. um but yeah I'm also very excited to and pray for me wish me luck of course you got, <laughs> got this girl you. you'll be good I'll be all right but thank bye. you bye. bye what would you do so this week on what would you do we have mm-hmm. a video I'll play the video so we don't have to explain it and it's kind of short so listen up if one of your bridesmaids planned her wedding the same week as yours. I'm kind of in shock right now because I just got a group text from one of my bridesmaids who very recently got engaged that she is likely dropping out of my wedding (gasps) because she's having her wedding the same week as mine. (laughs) I'm pretty upset. I'm very upset, but I wonder how other folks would feel and what other folks would do. So that's the, what would you do? Her friend who was recently engaged her, she obviously was engaged first because her wedding is already planned, already has a date, Mm -hmm. has dropped out of her wedding party and has said that her wedding is most likely going to be the same weekend as the friend's wedding. What would you do? That's not your friend. That's an evil, nasty person. (laughs) And it ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. It ain't none that cut that bitch off. But what would you I mean, do? Opera. Evil, nasty. Evil, nasty. 
Yes, girl. What if she Even got like a, a, de- a deal on the venue? I'm just trying to understand why. Well, she you must get not the you, same weekend. Maybe you don't want a deal on our friendship because that's fucked the up. The fact that she's dropped the, where she lost, like where my mouth dropped was she's dropping out of my wedding to have her wedding. It just, it's just. Well, yeah, she can't be a bridesmaid and a bride on the same day. Why would you, yeah, uh, why funny. would you want to do that's that? Movie. Why would you even want to do that? That's right. just weird. She's nasty bitch. You think she's trying I to mean, be competitive? I, I just don't get it. And they must have friend overlap. So now people are going exactly. to have to choose. That's Ooh, I don't like her. Um, I would jump her, you, to be honest. If you can't. Okay, no, black girls texting does not condone violence. Um, That's just weird. If you care to rectify this relationship, which my personal advice and seemingly Chelsea's aligned is no. But if you do, then maybe ask her what's up with that. But that just don't make no sense to me. I'm just like... Maybe someone's dying. That's what I'm wondering. I'm like, are there other things going on here like but again, that would mean that would need venue? to be the wedding is like asap are no you about the- to have a baby Does she maybe she's about to give birth soon and she's trying to get married first like i'm just confused you know? but then if mine is saturday like yours gotta be sunday sis right but but well, what is these days are three days maybe she's not too maybe she's shotgun <laughs> Why would she want to share that time with you? Why would she want to do that? Like, what? I would want my wedding is going to be like, ain't no weddings the month before or the month after. If I can, you know, I don't know. That's extreme. <laughs> Even though Pick that, was thing, month. that was a thing during COVID, let me tell you, the white girls were cutting up. Okay. Because, you know, these oh, white really? girls, they, they be friends, but they don't really be friends. And so one girl, her wedding was already scheduled. And then she, another girl had hers like a week prior and the bride was flipping out because she was like, oh my God, people are going to get COVID and then they're not going to come to my wedding. And she did it a week before because she knew that that was going to happen. What? (laughs) Are people that fucking evil? (laughs) That is, that is kind of fucked up now. I I didn't think it was a big deal, but that is, someone could get COVID. Sometimes venues don't have spaces in that instance that you're talking about Shade. this person is just like okay, this is just strange i find it it's just weird that's not your friend yeah cut her off mm-hmm. but I, the bitch dropped her. out the wedding anyway so you don't have to she's not yeah whatever bye thank you next next now where it's unfair is to uh, your friends your other friends uh, who now have to choose between whoa what if she wedding? starts trying to take if she starts trying to take bridesmaids then it's a problem it's all wrong it's all wrong i i just don't want i want to know more context i feel like somebody's either dying she's having a baby or the venue is booked or okay i don't care that part doesn't make any she got a cheap deal because no i don't care for her excuses that's so wrong she's chopping the wedding has to be next week and her closest loved one has to have a expiration date right within that week like someone's that's on their that's the only way it has to be that time right and she's not inviting any of our overlap friends she's just gonna have her parents and that's it no no no, no no if if I'll, I'll i'll give you that if you know someone really important needs to be there no damn damn yo that's kind of crazy i don't know she i chops. can't think about it i can't think about it i can't think about it I will tell you, Blocker. my anxiety grows daily because I'm like, oh my God, like one of my other very close friends is definitely potentially getting engaged in a few months. Chelsea still hasn't told us timelines. What if the timelines overlap? I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I think about it a lot because it's been wedding season and it's been like back to back to back. Everyone being at weddings. And I'm like, oh God, please. Yeah, but it's only the two of us. Yeah. There's no one else. I know, but both of you are very important weddings. So I'm hoping that like it's not too close. Things okay. are are relaxed. Girl, you don't have to make like, it work. No, no. I mean we can't make an overlap work, but yeah, exactly. Not overlap. You'll make the if you choose, choose as the soon same as I know, you'll know. Her, 
As soon as you know, as soon as I know, you'll know. What I'm gonna be like, you gotta change your bachelorette weekend because that's actually Chelsea's bachelorette weekend. So like, you can't do that. I would actually say that to her, and I think she'd be okay with it unless it. Was I like, think like as soon as you know her stone. dates, tell me. As soon as you know my dates, tell her. Like if I know her dates, I'm not gonna put it the same day as her. You're both gonna be like October third. To get the joke. No, I mean yes, but What's shut that up. Joke? Is that for mean? <laughs> the girls? mean girls. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 October 3rd. So um, okay. Listeners, and that specific woman, chop that bitch, jump her, call your cousins and your sisters and everybody and jump her. <gasps> what if her it's a white woman? Oh, well, Lord. that's different. And maybe don't because you'll probably go to jail. Um, now now Glenn is. has a problem. If she's white, she's like, <laughs> like oh. well, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> now she's low down and dirty. I understand the justice system. Um, okay, well, thanks for listening. Please go online and follow us on Instagram at Black Girls Texting. Guys, Serena Williams just posted us. Period. I'm kind of freaking out, but yeah. Um, so Black Girls Texting is on the up and up. You know, get on this ride before it's too late. Never and too late. join us on Patreon. It might be one day. Fine. <laughs> join us on Patreon. That's scary. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of. And we also have some new sweatshirts. So fall is here and you need a little sweaty, sweaty shirt. So get one. Y'all was in our DMs talking about. I'm not going to make a complaining voice because that's rude <laughs> and I respect you all, but I'm inclined to do it. See? See me working on myself? Mm. But y'all was in the DMs talking about. There's not enough sizes. We need more sizes. So I ordered the sizes. So what are we doing? What are we talking about? I heard you right. doing that complaining voice on the stories, actually. And I, I clocked it. I peeped it. Damn. I know. I was like, what's that voice? I didn't mm-hmm. peep that. Mm-hmm. So look at you. You know, rectifying. Mm-hmm. 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 But yeah, anyway, so we got sizes. We got new colors. All kind of cute shit. Yes. Yes, right, it is. Guys. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.